Welcome to the Catbird Quilts. I'm Kathy Martin, and in today's video, I'm going to do another fabric pull, this time for the Birch Point Quilt by Erin from The Blanket Statement. And you know how much I have to say about it. So let's get started. So, true confessions. This will be the second time doing this video. We actually did this very video, well, not this very video, but this fabric pull video for the Birch Point Quilt from the Blanket Statement right on the heels of the previous video. Actually, that one was going to be one video, and I have a lot to say <laughs> about everything, but definitely about fabric pulls and colorways and using the color wheel. And, and we realized halfway in whew, too much. This is one video. So we made the second video, which would have been this one. And, um, it was totally fine and recorded it. And we had some technical difficulty and lost, um, some of the footage. Actually, one of the cameras went out. And so all of the great detail shots that help you guys see what I see was the part that was missing. And so you'd have just had to look at my face doing like this and talking and you wouldn't have even been able to see the fabric. So this is a redo, but the thing about redos is, um, I think when you get a second chance, you get to learn from the first chance. And if things didn't go well, which the video was fine, but after I we got done filming that video, I was so excited about this quilt pattern that I literally did not even clean up from the stuff that I used for the video. I just went straight to cutting the rest of the fabric and started sewing. For those of you that are old enough, do you remember in like junior high and high school, back in the days of corded phones? And you know, you have the phone in the kitchen, which is the one that the kids generally use. And you have to stretch the phone cord into another room so your parents don't listen to what you're talking about. And you get really excited about something and you're like, hey, I gotta go, I'll call you later. And you get the satisfaction of going click. And then like you run to go do what you're wanting to do. And sadly, with cell phones, it's just not as you just don't mm, like it just doesn't have <laughs> like you can't push that button with authority like you can hang up that corded phone and, you know, run, go play with your friends or whatever, run to the mall or so that's that was kind of what I did. I like, you know, we did like, ta da, we're done with the video. And I was like, OK, I'm going to start working on this on this uh, quilt. And so I did. And you know, had picked fabrics to go with it and set it together. And then I'm, I'm going to put a pin in this statement and then we're going to revisit because I want to tell you kind of all the things that went wrong <laughs> and why this video is going to be better and more informative or maybe educational or maybe entertaining, hopefully entertaining, than the first one would have been because of the things that I learned in the time period that has elapsed. So these are the strips. These are the two and a half inch wide binding strips that I got from the shirts that I used for the how much binding is in each size men's shirt, minus the yellow. In the previous video, I eliminated this one and this one and worked with these four to pull together a colorway for uh, the Celestial Stripes by Zen Chic. And so I thought after I did that, um, when we were planning the original video, I thought, oh, well, how fun would it be if I did another colorway with the two that I eliminated? And I had already been looking at hundreds of Jelly Roll friendly quilt patterns and had seen the Birch Point quilt a couple of years ago and whew, just think it's so beautiful. So I thought, hmm, I wonder if I can make that work. So I'm going to take away the ones that I used on the Celestial Stripes quilt pattern and we're going to go from there. So give me just a sec. 
So these two fabrics were the ones that I eliminated. And someone in the previous comment said they call this process of elimination, and it very much is. So what I've done is taken the two that I eliminated and I've kept the yellow, which by the way, I say yellow, Y-U-L-L-O-W. I don't know why. I like ye yellow. I can't even say it properly. But so if I say yellow, <laughs> then you'll know. <laughs> so I decided to keep the yellow because I thought it would be interesting to see how the two similar fabrics kind of could be used in two different ways. And it turns out that that particular quilt pattern, it has three sets of colorway or colors. And so it's a light gradient and then kind of a medium gradient. And when I mean gradient, what I mean by gradient is from a lighter value to a darker value. And there are three of them. So there are nine separate fabrics uh, that are used. And I thought, well, this will be perfect because I've got three um, to start with and I'll add two for each one and it'll be great. So let's start with the yellow because that's what I did as well. And I had this yellow fabric pulled for the other colorway and I actually, still liked it, but you know how when you do something slightly different, you think, oh, I need to do something different. So I tried this one, which would work, uh, and actually would work with these other two, but for some reason I nixed it. I think I felt like it was a little too dark. And then, um, so I pulled this back in. I was like, you know, it doesn't have to be different. And so then I pulled this cream, kind of beigey cream, and felt like it was a little too blah, just isn't interesting enough. And then I've remembered this fabric. It's a shirt, and I think it actually might be a women's shirt, but it's a white shirt with, I call it the golden sprig, because it has little golden sprigs, <laughs> little, <laughs> little flowers. It actually reminds me of um, time. Timely, not T-I-M-E, but T-H-Y-M-E. Um, and you know how if you're using it in fade, you have to like strip it the opposite way. Anyway, I don't know why I went there. That's what this looks like to me. So I call it the golden sprig. And I thought this would be nice because it's white, which makes it will make it look lighter than the yellow. But it has some interest. And so I knew this is going to read yellow. This is going to read a pale, pale yellow. Again, we do the arm test. so. It's not white, it's yellow, but it's going to look much more white. And so I needed really a white to get a lighter value. So kind of instantly settled on that. Ooh, the threads today. You can tell I have had this fabric all over the house. So I kind of settled on that like, all right, well, that's a good starting place. And then now, oh. So let's do the easier of the two, which is actually this one to my right. It is an interesting fabric because it is not woven in. It's printed and it's kind of like rough circles, but they're done in a grid. So it, I don't know, it's, it, it reads an unusual color. You can see that it's printed because the back is, um, there's a wrong side and a right side which sometimes is so nice because when you're sewing, then you know what you've got it right. Although I guess if it's the same on both sides, it doesn't matter. But anyway, so I started off with my blues as I am prone to do. And initially I thought of this as a medium value. So when I say value, what I mean is dark light. So how how bright it is. So light versus medium versus dark. I think of this as a medium because when I look at it, what I see is these dark blue circles on it. But in reality, because they're surrounded on a white background, it really is fairly light. Now up against my white table, it looks kind of medium, but as soon as I put something light with it, you realize, oh, well, so I would have said that's a pretty light shirt. There's another one right here. And that is a smidge lighter, but not a lot. So the first thing I did was really try to match 
or find something that would go with that blue. I knew that was probably too bright and too blue. It's also a cotton poly, so I kind of, ugh, it's a lot of work. This I loved instantly. And you may remember from the previous video, this is a, I call it cornflower. I don't know if that's actually accurate. It's got a little bit of purple in it. Uh, I did this with a plaid in the previous video. I liked that right away. It's pretty close to the color that's in the fabric. It's a little bit more vibrant and a little bit more purple. This can read a little bit gray, but it it seemed to go together to me. Um, so I kind of held that out like that might work. This was a little linen and it has kind of a heathered look about it. And if I'm looking at this, I say blue, but when I put it down against blue, it really kind of reads gray and definitely is not enough of a contrast there. So I kind of nixed that. And I really didn't have a lot of what I would consider medium blues. Uh, so I'm just like, well, we're just going to kind of roll with that. I had the whole debate, do I go lighter and this is the medium or do I go darker? And so I kind of did that all at one time, which is, um, it's what, that's one of the things about making a colorway and playing with fabric. Sometimes you have to kind of have it all out like, like this, either on the table or on the floor or because this might work, but then it wouldn't work with the one that's darker or whatever. So that was too vibrant. So I got rid of this. This felt a little too purple. I had it narrowed down to these two. And then I was like, is there enough of a jump between this to this to really get that gradient effect? And I kind of, mm, well, let's get out the navies and see. And so I... I went this route, but because this has a slightly blue cast to it, uh, I'm sorry, purple cast, it's blue, <laughs> has a slightly purple cast to it. And this navy is more in the other side of the blue category. It's not green by any stretch, but it's much more blue and less purple. That could work, but felt a little potentially um, just enough off that you go, mm, didn't quite nail it. And then I tried this and it's all right. <laughs> this is really how I felt about it. Like, I mean, it's okay. Uh, it's, it's okay. Uh, and I got this far and I'm like, I'm not liking this navy. This one I actually really, really liked because it does have a little bit more purple in, but I felt like it was too dark. And then I'm, oh, good grief. I tried this one. It's too gray. Um, and then I remembered this shirt fabric that I have that's kind of an unusual, it's teeny, teeny, tiny stripes of navy with really this color in between. And so it reads um, less dark value. So let me grab that. So here's that shirt. Um, and I actually already have it cut in a strip and We'll get to that in a minute. I don't know if you can see it. We'll try to zoom in up close. But the the lighter stripe in this very fine stripe is almost exactly that color. And the darker stripe is a navy. But the blend of them is really lovely and reads dark, but isn't dark like this is dark. Do you see that? And so really, here's the whole gradient. This is kind of nice, what I have going on right here. <laughs> and that's the way this goes. And sometimes my younger daughter will say, um, there's too big of a jump, meaning this to this to this. The jump from here to here in value is, or like the jump from here to here is bigger than the jump from here to here. And so a lot of our time spent when we are picking fabrics and colors is trying to get that right ratio, if you will, between the medium, the light, and the dark values. And if you can get that jump to be kind of similar, it's very pleasing. It's, it's just objectively pleasing. And in fact, actually, we were putting together a completely other colorway for the orange peel quilt. And 
she made this statement about the jump was too big. And I said, well, baby doll, it's, it's not a gradient. This is, this is not going to be, these two fabrics are not going to be touching each other. So it doesn't matter. And she goes, yeah, but mom, if the gradient is right away from the quilt, then once you put it into the quilt, even if it doesn't touch each other, it will objectively look better. And I thought that was an interesting observation, just that if it works in a gradient and it's very pleasing, even if those fabrics don't touch each other, they're going to inform how the quilt looks and feels. So she's right, of course. <laughs> so I decided on nixing the darkest and nixing the lightest and ended up with this which I really liked. And so then, so that's, that's one, and it really is a gradient. Here's one gradient. Here's the other. I'm like, okay, okay. That's, that's working. Those are really pretty together, by the way. I don't know if you can, I don't know why I'm pushing that so far away from me. So do you see that? The, um, the darks are not the same dark, but they are definitely that gradient from the darkest to the lightest in really the same color family. And for those of you that love the color wheel, um, blue and yellow are opposite each other. Actually, purple and yellow are exactly complementary. but these work well together. I mean, and it's kind of a known thing in quilting circles. Uh, there's, it's hard to beat a blue and yellow quilt. So we know that that's gonna work. So got that kind of settled. And then, then comes this one. And I struggled with this one from the very beginning, even when I picked the shirt. It is a very small plaid. It is so small that, of course, it doesn't read plaid from a distance. In the white in it is kind of a grayish white, and then it's a it's a pretty turquoise turquoise, but it's paired with a navy that is kind of in the purple family. And so it reads this kind of complicated blue. That's why I threw it out of the other <laughs> fabric pull because I couldn't figure out. I started from the top again, just like it's a wash. Let's, let's start from the beginning. And I want to show you what I did and where I landed. I love this fabric so much. I wanted this to work. And of course, no, too green. And then, well, this one is much bluer and that's pretty close to that turquoise. I wish I could get a thread that was thick enough where you could see it. It's pretty close actually to that, but it just looks too green. It's, it's just too green. Now, if I had, again, we talked about this in the previous video, if I had a whole color wash of all different turquoises and aquamarines and teal and every blue-green combination under the sun, this would be harmonious. It really even with this, which we're going to get there. But just if I'm going for three colors, dark, medium, light, this is, it is darker than this, but it's not, it's not the right color. So it, it might be the right value, although it's a little bit light, um, but it's not the right hue. It's not the right color. So nix that. Then I thought, well, maybe this can be the darker of the three. Put this up against it. No. <laughs> and then I was like, well, I need, okay, so let's skip that. Let's go to the light. So, so I pulled my light blues back out. I decided to wait on the dark. <laughs> Very much in the procrastination mentality these days. So I, you know, kind of line these up beside, much like I did the other one. Some of you who have watched previous videos of mine will recognize that from the your very first quilt, the easy first quilt video. That's the light blue. And you can see, like in a stack, you would have just said, oh, those are just all light blue. But when you start seeing them next to each other, this one looks purple. Do you see that? Especially next to these. This one looks purple, so it's out. This one has a little bit of purple undertone, but next to this kind of turquoisey family, it, it reads too blue. And then that got me down to these three. And this one felt a little gray, so I pulled it out. And then that left these two. And 
I love this fabric. It's very thin and it, it definitely goes, but I settled on this one because it has just that slight turquoise undertone. And I thought, oh, that's so pretty. And so I pulled my, I pulled my turquoises back out and I found this one, which also a shirt, also cotton poly. And I put it in the middle and I put it on this side and I chose it. And I will be honest with you right now, this is where this video, there's a fork in the road from the previous video. I like this pairing, actually. I think it's really pretty, but it is really not the right gradient. And it's also not the right saturation and really not even the right hue. <laughs> so it's not the right color. It's too vibrant, meaning it needs a little bit more gray. It needs to be a little more muted. And it's it's not really, it needs to either be lighter or darker. But I like it. And so I settled on it. And this was this was the three. And that actually is, it is pretty, it's, it's pretty. And so if you're watching this going, I don't see what's wrong with that. Well, I didn't either, honestly. And so I hung up the phone after the video and got out my cutting mat, and my rotary cutter and cut all the strips and sewed them the first row and then the second row. And then I had a I think I made a mistake. I think I made a mistake. So I want to show you what that looks like and maybe you'll see it too. All right. If you're wondering why I have this fabric hanging off the edge of my <laughs> sewing table, it's because I actually sewed the second row um, and I don't want you to see it yet. So I sewed this first row and went, oh, oh. <laughs> And it was so enjoyable. Those of you that sometimes you, I don't know if you're like me, I like piecing. I like the geometric shapes that it makes. I like the secondary patterns that it makes. I like the tertiary patterns that it makes. But sometimes it's nice to just sit down and go, and so like just, and I did that. I sewed like all these strips together. And oh, so satisfying. And then I went and pressed them. And I never thought that I would enjoy ironing and pressing as much as I do, but I really do so much so that we made a, I'm picking, I'm talking and picking, picking and talking. We made a pressing video that's like ASMR. So it's just this row, press, this row, press. Here's a big aside. It's a, it's a big aside. Uh, we're coming up on a year anniversary for the Catbird Quilts YouTube channel. And we have new things in the works. And so prepare yourself because a Patreon account is coming and there's going to be additional content and all kinds of good stuff. But anyway, so we made this ASMR pressing video and that was fun and I was sewing and happy. And then I said the next row and let me show you that. And so here's the next row. And I actually still like it <laughs> at this point. I still liked it. I was like, oh, that's going to be so pretty. And that, you know, the two blues, I'm still picking by the way and talking. That is going to be so lovely. Oh my goodness. I love that. But there was something about it kind of niggling in my brain and I couldn't put my finger on it. And so I went on to the third row. Now I want to say at this juncture, this is one of those times where if I had done a test block, it still would not have tipped me off to what I feel like kind of went awry because this is lovely, which is a block. And this is lovely, which is a block. And the next block, by itself is lovely. It was only when I put it together. So I want to show you the next block. And that is this. 
And I hope some of you are immediately like, that turquoise is, just does not work because the reality is that turquoise just does not work. And so the way the quilt pattern works, it's very light, medium, and then the darker, and it carries to the next row. And then the next row is light, dark, which carries, and then medium. And then the last row is the opposite of this. So then at the very end, it's dark, medium, light. And what makes this quilt pattern distinctive is that dark value, right, that bar, right in the middle of the quilt. And so I'm going to actually get Paul to put the picture up again if you've forgotten what it looks like. So he's going to probably put it up here somewhere. <laughs> um, and so I sewed this one and I actually think it's pretty, but if I had taken a picture of this and then switched it over to black and white, it would have immediately highlighted what the problem is. These two, this is too bright. It's pretty close to the right color, maybe not perfect, but they are this roughly the same value. And so what it's missing is the contrast. So the next row would be this. This is lovely. This is nice. This is actually pretty together, but where it doesn't work is right here. And I had the whole, I had all of these pieces. Now I had not sewn them together yet. And I looked at it. And so at this point I had this thrown over the ironing board. My elder daughter comes out and says, that is so pretty. And I was like, yeah, I'm not sure about this next row though. And I pulled out the block and my elder daughter is much more free with color and pattern and she's she's very much um I feel like she has more creative creativity and more freedom really than me it doesn't have to be precise for her and she's rarely critical particularly about artistic choices she's generally just super supportive like that is so pretty oh I love that love what you chose and she goes um I don't think that turquoise works. And I was like, and she, she said out loud what I was already thinking. And I was like, oh, I know, I, I think I'm just going to go ahead with it. And she goes, I mean, it'll still be pretty. <laughs> and the thing is, it would still be pretty, but it, it just doesn't quite work because it's not, it doesn't do that gradient thing. So I had all the blocks and I got to that point and had the you know, swear words forming in my mouth. They were already in my brain. And I was just like, I, I need to step back. I got ahead of myself because I was so excited and it's so fun to just sew. I rushed and I, I got ahead of myself. And so put it aside. And then comes the other night, got home from work. And that's when we discovered that we were going to need to redo this video. And I thought, you know, I'm going to be talking about this colorway and it doesn't work. And as I was sitting on the couch thinking about it, I got that muse, the, the creative muse. And I thought, you know, what it's missing, and this is, this is truly what I thought, it's kind of like a sunset, but there's no, maybe, maybe the way to go is to go just a whole other direction. And that's why these, these other stack of fabrics are here. And I started questioning everything. I rethought the yellow. I rethought that I tried this yellow, which is so remarkably close. It wasn't even worth considering. You see that I cut the collar off so I could actually try it. I tried some of my orange linen, which that is so lovely. Um, this one is pretty, and I'm, I'm not going to belabor the point. I really want to, but you don't want to be with me here all day. Um, I tried all of these different oranges and I thought, oh, well, what I need is a, you know, this, this is not contrasty enough. So maybe if I went turquoise, orange, vermilion, which actually, oh, that's so pretty. I mean, like all of these colors, I hope you're just going, oh, oh, I can see that. And I laid them out and I, ugh, I did the whole thing. There's my persimmon one that I've tried. I tried 
every orange, yellow, orange, orange, red, red, orange (laughs) combination and was like a woman possessed there for a while. No kidding. Fabric everywhere, all over the floor. It was time for bed. Paul's like, how are you going to be up? I I don't know. I'm just trying to work this out. And I'm sure you, none of you can imagine that I might get snippy about the fact that I can't work this colorway out, which was exactly what happened. And so I was like, so frustrated. And then I was like, wait a minute, let's go, let's go back to the beginning. And I went back to the quilt pattern and looked at it again and looked closely this time and realized that what makes that quilt pattern so, so compelling is a, the very dark bars that are right in the middle of the quilt. And so I did it again. I started again and I got rid of the turquoise and said, okay, this is the one that's not working. And this is what was left. And I had a come to Jesus meeting with myself and looked at the quilt pattern again. I'm like, it's not contrasty enough. I need a dark fabric. And I remembered that I have a navy in my stash that's a shirt that I've had a hard time working with because it's navy, but it has kind of a turquoise blue, very, very small polka dot on it. And it reads very muted. And I pulled it out and went, yep, that's it. And so to let you see that, here's the, so here we go. And so this was where I landed. And so I have my dark, which is actually very light, medium light, dark, medium light, dark, medium light. And then the way the quilt pattern works, it's actually in that middle row, it's light, dark, medium. And suddenly I was much happier with it. Now, just like this, actually, I wasn't even sure, but when you do those long strips that cut, that carry um, the, the middle of the quilt, it just tied it in better. I thought to myself, I'm so glad that I took the time to, to work through it. Have you ever seen uh, Jerry Maguire? And at the very beginning, he says, break down, break through. And that's what I felt like happened. But what it took for me was going back to the quilt pattern reminding myself what the original vision for the quilt pattern is and recreating that in my own colorway. And I will say, and I have said this before, and I've had some folks kind of scoff about it. In my great quilt patterns, it's not really a series, but in those episodes that I do, I talk about how sometimes quilt patterns are beautiful, but they don't work for every colorway or they don't work for every style print. And I would say that's the case with this quilt pattern. Um, It is so lovely. And there are different, I have seen different versions of it, and there are some that are pretty. But what's stunning and compelling about that very first, about the actual design, is that first colorway. And so... I, that's like, it was just kind of a awakening for me. And when you have a quilt pattern like this one, where there's no sashing, there's not a lot of, um, there, you know, it's only rectangles and they're all touching each other. It needs that very dark value to give it a point of interest. If this had background fabric all around it and through it or sashing or cornerstones, you can do colors that there isn't a very big jump between them. But when you don't have the interest of the background fabric or sashing or whatever that breaks it up, it almost has to have some sort of dark value and light value to give it visual clarity 
and beauty. So, wow. And I told Paul, um, as we were preparing to make this video, um, I wish that I could embrace in life what I seem to be able to embrace a little bit better in quilting, which is we had this technical failure with the camera and then I felt like I made some bad choices in fabric and it's like, oh, this is great because now I can do it better and I've learned from it and it will be better and everybody can learn from my mistakes, if you will. Man, wouldn't that just be amazing if we could do, I wish I could view my life like that. Like when things don't go well or have a really hard week or at work or things are challenging with our children or whatever, it's very tempting to look at that like, ugh. And sometimes we will say, can't something go right? Like, can't something go right? And with this video and with this quilt pattern, for me, what went wrong has been such a reward on this side. Because now I think I have a far prettier colorway. I'm excited about finishing it up. Um, you know, it's just, it's it's been a great learning experience. And I hope that maybe you can see how those things have come together and maybe it'll be a really, really pretty quilt in the end. So I still have more to say, but that's enough about that for today. Thank you for being with me. I hope this has been a good exercise in color and value for you. I hope you have learned like I have, and I just appreciate you being with me. I'm Kathy Martin. This is the Catbird Quilts. Thank you so much for watching. <music>